Five Nights at Freddy's officers are a stakeholder in the Five Nights at Freddy's games, and in this video, I will rank every single one. I'll be making them based on how iconic they are, how practical they would be in real life, as well as whether the office flows well with the gameplay of the game. For games that have multiple officers, I will include them all together for the one game. Also, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 will be on this list. If you have a problem with it, let me know in the comments. Anyways, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get started. At the bottom of the list, I have security breaches, many, many officers. For starters, no one cares about these officers at all. Let's be real, they are quite boring. Secondly, in terms of safety, this varies quite a bit. The first office we enter is quite safe since the door has unlimited power, despite the fact that we are told it doesn't. The Rockstar Row office is also quite safe, as you have electric shocks to deter any threats that may be present. However, the Kitchen Office, the Afton Office, the Daycare Office, and the Endo Office are all extremely unsafe. The L Chips one isn't much better either. Now for gameplay, being in the offices is honestly not as good. It doesn't flow as well with normal gameplay. A lot of the gameplay is scuffed because of how broken this game is, and as a result, none of these offices are fun to play through. And that's why Security Breach is at the bottom. Fire to 36 probably takes the cake for having the most terrifying office setup as you're in such a claustrophobic space with two huge vent openings literally right next to your head. You literally have nothing to defend yourself with except having to be quiet and having an audio lure and a flashlight I guess, and on top of that you cannot leave unless you complete all your tasks. So looking at it from the top, in terms of practicality, no. Just, just no. You are going to die. Especially considering how hot this office gets. This office is iconic in Final Fantasy Freddy's, so it does get points for that. However, in terms of gameplay, I'll be honest, I really do not enjoy this gameplay loop at all. The RNG in this night is super finicky, and this gameplay loop is just boring. Waiting for characters to just move along, and while it's stressful the first time, it really loses its impact fast. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is my favourite game, but in terms of office design, I have some problems. This bedroom is super weird in design and makes it super, super impractical to defend yourself. I mean, what bedroom has two openings? On top of that, there isn't a single safe space in this entire game. You are left completely out in the open, basically just waiting for someone to jump you. Now, in terms of gameplay and how iconic this office is, well, it depends. Gameplay-wise, it's one of the best, as you are always having to move in order to prevent death. Although, again, this can lead to the impracticality that this simple office has. But anyways, in terms of how iconic this office is, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely the most unique, but I don't think it's nearly as iconic as the next couple. While I'm not a huge fan of this game overall, I won't deny that this game has some iconic staples, and this office is one of those staples. While completely impractical, as there are literally no doors whatsoever, I mean, the number of animatronics that can just walk into your office whenever they feel like is just ridiculous. In terms of how iconic this office is, it's definitely in the top three most iconic Final Fantasy Freddy's offices. In fact, I would say that it was the second most iconic FNAF office, so why is it so low on the list? Well, truth be told, this game's, well, gameplay is pretty lacking. It's just a repeat loop of wine music box, throw on mask, flash hall, repeat, and it gets really old really fast, especially considering that 9 out of the 11 characters are dealt with in the same way. But this game being as iconic as it is, saves it for sure. Now this may not be the most iconic office in this series, however it's definitely the first office that's at least a little bit practical. This office has 6 openings which can all be sealed off as well as audio lures, heaters, AC, music box and everything you need to deal with all the threats. In fact you are quite safe for the most part. The tricky part is just managing all the threats without forgetting something. But yeah, the office is pretty safe, although some of the characters can phase through doors, so watch out. Now in terms of the gameplay, this game's office complements the gameplay quite well, as there is a lot to consider and keep track of and the amount of openings may seem overwhelming, but it actually flows super well. This game did a great job managing to balance all the mechanics without overwhelming the player in any way for the most part. Now this might be a bit biased, but I love the Final Fantasy Sleep building, and especially the office. The office is just as iconic as the second game's one, if I'm being completely honest. And let's be real, this office is pretty practical. While there are no doors, Spring Trap is lured like a little puppy to any room that you use the audio lure in. And the building is quite light, now I'm just playing, this office is not practical at all. However, it is extremely iconic and it flows with the gameplay super well in my mind. This game balances the tug of war of Spinning Trap so well, and to have this open office with two sides 
makes it that you have to balance keeping track of a spring trap with fixing everything, and in my mind, it just works so well. Now here is what the swing trap boss fight should be, or something, I don't really know what I'm trying to say here. I love the office for Ended Night, and in extension, the Sister Location Custom Night. While I don't like this game overall, to me it is easily a highlight, and the office design and layout has a lot to do with that. For starters, it's super iconic with its back to basics approach being very similar to the first game's office. The boss fight of Ended is also super iconic too. The Custom Night represents the expertly crafted gameplay and how much the office actually complements it. Sister Location's Custom Night is regarded as the best design and most balanced of the Custom Nights, a statement which I agree with. In terms of how practical this office is, it serves as an effective counter, except for the power, which drains stupidly fast if you're not paying attention. However, the power mechanic is only bad if you don't do your job as a security guard, right? So do your job, I guess. Without a doubt, the Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 office ticks all three boxes for this list. It's extremely iconic, having been remade hundreds of times over and can be recognised even by individuals who have no idea what Final Fantasy Freddy's is. The gameplay is super balanced too, with the office doors providing two vectors of attack with two animatronics attacking from each end. Perfectly balanced. The gameplay loop is smooth and the practicality is pretty much as good as it gets. Besides the power, which isn't as bad in this game as it is in, say, Sister Location's office, this office is extremely safe and effective against the animatronic threats, and for that, it gets the top spot as the most iconic and safe office in Final Fantasy Freddy's. Well, that's my list. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.